we have gained through our years doing elementary school math Olympia. Now let's um, give some time to Kaylee to introduce herself as well. Hi, I'm Kaylee. I'm the twin sister of Karen, and I am the other instructor for this camp. In this open house, we will begin with introductions, so who we are and about this camp. Okay, so let's get straight into what today's open house is going to consist of. Um, before we start doing the actual problems, we're going to do some brief introductions so you can have a better picture of what our summer camp is all about. After, we are going to discuss the Mass Olympiad practice problems that you should have completed prior to this open house. So it was the, the, the document with the five problems on it. And finally, we're going to learn something about, so we're going to learn something called cryptorhythms, a type of really, really cool math puzzle that Kaylee is super excited to teach you all about. So let's get into our introductions. Our camp is based off of Math Olympiad, or you might see it as M-O-E-M-S, which is a math competition for elementary and middle schoolers. In this camp, we have challenges of all different levels to meet the needs of different students. We can guarantee that by the end of the summer, every single person will leave gaining something new. And some of the strategies, I mean the categories or topics we'll cover, it includes itinerary problems, ratio problems, geometry problems, computation, probability, number sense, pre-algebra, and logical thinking, and so on. So these topics are covered in many other math competitions as well, such as AMC8, Math Counts, Xie Er Si, and Math Kango Group. And lastly, we really encourage discussion-based learning. So if developing these skills will help you in so many ways, just like in school, maybe your friends and classmates will start asking you more questions and you'll be able to help them more because of your ability to express your ideas clearly. Okay, so as Kaylee said, we this is a very interactive class. So this so it's a small group and we really want everybody to be participating. So here are just some camp expectations um, as we get further into this open house. We are going to treat this as a class, so please do turn on your video. Okay, sometimes I know it is a bit embarrassing to show your face, but you know, everybody feels that way and it's fun because we do want to be as interactive as possible. Second, please participate actively in class. So we are eventually going to have a roster of names where we have all the students and because it is virtual, it is really hard to just, you know, raise your hand. And some people may be shyer than the others. So we are going to give everybody a chance by calling their name. If you really don't know the answer, you can pass. But we really want everybody to really try. Okay, so this is how you're going to be engaged in the class. Third, please always be prepared to class. So part of this is bringing a pencil and eraser and a notebook. This is how you're going to take notes, how you're going to actively write down how you're solving the problems because writing down things actually helps you learn better and if you write it down instead of doing all the math in your head you're going to be much more organized this is a skill and a habit we want you to start doing finally please 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 complete the independent work on time so in terms of today it would be the math Olympiad practice test if some of you guys you know missed out missed out on that totally fine this is the first time but as we as we move on, please do complete the independent work. Now we're going to move on to more about Math Olympiad. As Kaylee mentioned previously, our class is going to be based off of the topics that come up frequently in Math Olympiad. Now, what is Math Olympiad? Well, it is a math competition for elementary and middle schools, especially Division E is for grades four through six. So, you know, Liliana, if you are next year, you're going to be in fifth grade, right? So this is the perfect time to start Math Olympiad. I'm sure that at your school or somewhere nearby, there is going to be an opportunity or, you know, a team that you can join. For me and Kaylee, we did it in when we were in fifth grade. Next year, we will be going to seventh grade. So at our school, there was an opportunity to join the Math Olympiad team. You know, it was free and it was such a wonderful experience. In Math Olympia, there are five problems per set, and there are multiple competitions in one school year. In each competition, you have 25 minutes to complete the problems. 
The problems are first easy and then they progressively get harder as you go towards the end. Now here we just have a few awards. Um, this is what we have received during our time at the end of our season. So here is the highest individual score award. This is for getting the highest individual score on your team. And this one is really rare, but um, hopefully if you complete our camp, you will have a better chance of earning this as well. This is the George Lechner Award, and this is for getting a 25 out of 25 score throughout the entire season. This is extremely rare because you're not getting one question wrong. But you know, if you miss a few, it's still so great. But hopefully if you come to our camp, you will have a much better chance of getting these awards as well. All right, moving on, we are going to do a quick computation warm up. So if you have a pen and a pencil or a piece of paper, um, please just, we're gonna have five minutes to quickly observe this problem right here and get our brains working. Okay, so we're going to have um, a few minutes for you to just pause and think about how you might solve this problem. All right, Liliana, um, let's, so this is a quick warm up. Um, you might have already got the, gotten the answer, you might have not, but can you just quickly share a few observations of what you can see about um, the series of fractions? Um, you may have to unmute, but just what are some of your observations? Uh, do you see any pattern? You don't have to have the right answer. This is supposed um, to be challenging. Underneath, it says one and one times two. And if you read all the numbers underneath, it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, exactly. So there is a really important reason why um, the denominator, right, the bottom, the, num the number on the bottom is called the denominator. So there's a reason why this is arranged like this. This is actually a super common type of number sequence that comes up in math competitions um, at this level. So for example, if we look at the second fraction right here, one over two times three, if you simplify it, you get one over six, right? Okay. Yeah, exactly. So this is one over six. We can rewrite one over six as one half minus one third. So we're essentially taking each one of these fractions, but we're rewriting them into, um, you know, one half minus one third, one third minus one fourth, so on. Now you might be asking me, why are we trying to make this harder? Because, you know, if you're somebody who is really good at calculating fractions, Maybe you just want to go ahead and solve it, you know, um, the traditional way. But this is actually so much easier. Okay, this is actually easier because if you see that we write out every single fraction in this form, one minus one half, one half minus one third, one third minus one fourth, and so on, you will start to see that we can cancel out each of these middle fractions. This is a really important trick to know when it comes to calculating fractions, especially if you see that there is a very obvious pattern to this. Like it's easy in one way, but it's also super hard. You have to know that there is a pattern and sometimes you're gonna have to think out of the box to solve it. This is why I love Math Olympiad because it's not really teaching you, okay, these are the exact ways of how you have, must solve this problem. There's different ways to just get the exact same answer and that's what makes this so fun. So everything in the middle can be canceled out. Therefore, we have the first number and oopsies, the first number and the very last number, which is one minus one six, which is equal to five six. Okay, so this is probably something that new, the first thing new thing that you have learned. Okay, now did you um do you have your practice test, math Olympiad practice test? Wait, let's first, yeah. wait, let's first ask. Do, um, do you have any questions on this warm up? Yeah. Is there anything you didn't understand or anything to clarify? Not really. Okay. Um, well, we hope you learned something new. And now we're going to move on to checking our answers from the 
uh, practice test that was sent out. If we're going too fast or you have any questions, be sure, like, like feel free to just unmute and say it aloud. Yeah, like, you can literally just unmute. Um, we're really flexible like that. Okay, so here are the first two problems. Um, this is an actual practice, this is an actual test from, you know, 2018. So we thought that the this would be perfect to just warm up, warm up our brains. So here are the first two problems. Um, did you complete this prior to class? Or um, because if you didn't, you could also, also complete it right now because we have plenty of time. So do you need extra time to finish this? I'm doing it right now. Oh yeah, okay. We can give you um, some time to just do these first two problems and then we can move on. Okay, that's fine. Oh, you could just unmute and tell us you're, you're ready when you're done with the first two problems. Okay, Liliana, are you ready to check our answers for the first two problems? We're probably gonna do two problems at a time. Yeah. Okay, um, so can you start by telling me, just looking at the first problem, how did you approach this problem? Did you add everything all together right on or did you split them up? How was, what was your solution? Um, I added 531 and 642, and then I just added all the other ones on to the answer. Okay, so pretty reasonable. You just took like groups of two and then just added them together one by one. Okay, so that is obviously, you know, this is just a computation problem, so it's not like there's many different ways to do it. Um, but that is definitely a good way. So what we have right here is splitting up each numbers, each number by the hundreds, the tens, and the ones. This way, this way we get 3,500 plus 250 plus 15. So our final answer is 3,765. So I'm assuming uh, this is also the answer that you got. Really the most important thing to be emphasized here is to be really organized. So you, your organizational method was to just do pairs of numbers like this. Here, the organization method is to break it up by place value. Either way, make sure that you're just really organized with your thinking and you're writing everything down, okay? Some people, they think about everything, they solve problems in their heads and it gets to be really, really messy. Okay, so moving on to the second problem. The first 40 odd count, count numbers are written. How many times does the number three appear as a digit. So can you tell me how you approach this problem? What was your mindset? Um, um, well, I kind of did the most obvious thing there was, which is write all of them down and then count them. So did you write down every single odd counting number or every single number or like how much, what did you write down? I wrote down all of the, those odd numbers, and I counted the threes one by one. Okay, so you literally wrote down, um, okay, all 40. That is definitely a solution, but you know, for time's sake, sometimes on the actual test, you only have 25 minutes. So what would be a bit more efficient way? I mean, if you're a fast writer, a fast counter, and you're accurate, definitely, but here's how you could also do it. We know that the first 75 odd counting numbers range from 1 to 79. We know this, so it has to be between 1 to 79. Okay, we know this because the first 40 odd counting numbers, right? So we just multiply the 40 by 80. I mean, we multiply the 40 by 2. So that gives us 80. From 1 to 80, how many counting odd counting numbers are there? Well, 80 itself doesn't count, right? So the previous number is 79. So the first seven, sorry, this should say the first 40 odd counting numbers. This is a mistake right here, okay? But the first 40 odd counting numbers range from one to 40. So now that we have a smaller range, we split it up. So we have a nice little table right here. How many times does the digit three appear in the tens place? And how many times does the digit three appear in the ones place? So we break it down into two smaller categories to think about. So in the tens place, there's 31, 33, 35, 37, and 39. And in the ones place, there's 
33, 43, 53, 63, and 73. So realize, also understand how my organization method into solving this problem is to first make myself a range. So I know that the range of the first four 40 I counting numbers is from one to 79. Now breaking it down even smaller, I break it down into how many times does it appear in the tens, how many times does it appear in the ones. So by breaking it down into smaller um, categories from big to small, you just really organized when it comes to solving this problem. But the one exception is that in the number 33, the digit three appears twice. So we do have to count 33 twice. So there, so it appears four times here, just in the tens, seven times just in the ones, and then two times in the special number 33. So altogether, you should have gotten 13 times. Okay, moving on to the next two. The so next go back to the previous problem. The this solution, the goal of the solution is to stay very organized and avoid mistakes, right? Because if you were just counting, you might make some mistakes, right? Exactly. Okay. So now we're gonna move on to 3C and 3D. Are you, um, do you need a bit more time with these two problems or can we start um, checking? Just all about what you need. If you need more time, we can do um, that. Well, the paper we got didn't have the figure on 3D, so we didn't. Oh, okay. And okay, we're really um, sorry about that. We did three C though. Okay. Um, for three D, then um, I want you to just. I'm. Um, we're gonna give you a few more minutes just to. You can quickly draw this grid out. Um, we want you to have have at least like some thought as we're going to this problem. So we're gonna give you a few more minutes doing to do three D. Okay, we're gonna start um, looking at our answers, how we did it for 3C and 3D. It's totally fine if you didn't finish one of them because all we're looking for is just what is your thoughts going into this problem? How do you plan to approach this problem? So can you explain how you thought, so here's a third problem. Ashley has a rectangle made out of paper that is eight centimeters by 12 centimeters. She folds it in half twice, first vertically and then horizontally. The new rectangle looks just like the original rectangle, but smaller. What is the area of the new smaller rectangle in square centimeters? So how did you approach this problem? Well, first I drew a square, and then I drew a line across it. Oh, you drew a, a square? Rectangle, rectangle. Oh, yeah. A rectangle! Rectangle! <laughs> and then I cut it in half by, by drawing a line horizontally, and then I drew it vertically. And then if you did that, that would be one fourth of the square. So yeah, it would exactly. be eight times 12 divided by four. And Oh yeah, that's exactly how you're I supposed got, to problem. Um, I got 24. Great, okay. So here we have a visual model as well. This is exactly what you did and you cut it into, you know, quarters. So the process is demonstrated. So be exactly what you said, right? We do eight times 12 divided by four, which is equal to 24 square centimeters. So this is the area of the new smaller rectangle. Now, how did you go about solving 3D or your process of thinking about it? We didn't actually get the answer yet, but I've got like an idea. Okay, what's your idea? Um, so since four would be like in the middle of all of them, we put it in the middle. And then I noticed that like the two ends, like one and seven, they added together, it equaled eight. And then the other, like the other two, two and six added together, they also equaled eight. And then three and five also were eight, but we weren't actually sure how to put them yet, so. Okay, I like your process of first splitting it, finding the middle number, and then seeing how even you could get it. But there, this is what makes this question hard, right? Because so many people go about it 
you know, they take four and then they put it in the middle right here because they feel like, you know, the middle number goes in the middle, so it's even. But there's actually another solution to this. So here it says, what is the least possible product of the numbers across the gray row? What is the least possible product? If it says, how do you arrange them so that they are, you know, all equivalent, sure, that is a great way you could do it. But it's talking about the least possible product. So a lot of people, they put four in the middle, right? But oh, the smallest yeah. three integers are one, two, and three. And even though this seems kind of, it's not going to work because one, two, and three, it's going to be off balance. Still try it because you, you'll find that if you put it in, you can put the remaining numbers into pairs of big and small. Five and, six, five and seven, four and six. By this way, you could arrange them in a way so that um, the sum of the numbers in the left col column and the right column um, are the same and you have the least possible product, which is six. But here we also did use your, your like sort of way of thinking, right? You knew that you had to pair up the big and small numbers into pairs. So here, this is what we did. But the first thing we did was to put one, two, and three into the gray row. So that was what we did first. That's all um, that was different about these, your solution and this solution. Okay, so moving on to this final problem. This is a cryptorhythm. Um, and for the previous problem, I have a comment because okay. I was also doing it. So with 3D, I think the one that kind of tripped me up or something that can be confusing is how in the problem it tells you about the sum of the numbers, which is what the numbers add up together to equal. And then the final question is asking the least possible product. The product is not the, it's not addition, it's instead it's multiplication. So that was what like might be a little bit confusing. Yeah, definitely, because if you're not reading the problem um, carefully enough, you might just think that it's talking about the sum instead of the um, numbers across the gray row. So you really have to be double checking your work and rereading the question multiple times to make sure your, your answer is right. Now we're going to move on to 3D. This is a cryptorhythm, and after this, Kaylee is actually going to teach you a little bit more about how to solve cryptorhythms specifically. But so, um, Eliana, do you need more time with this problem? Or, yeah, do you need more time? Um, we already finished it. Okay, that's great. So, explain to me what was, like, your first few steps solving this problem. Um, so, um, at first, we thought that t would probably be the zero, but then um, we tried it a different way. So it was more like we kind of switched up the numbers. We did b equals 1, e equals 0, t equals equals two. Explain to you, Karen, what you is know. that? Is that a Z or I? Can you explain like why you think B should be one? Just okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Go away, mom. <laughs> so since it said B couldn't be zero, then the least number could possibly be would be one. So I decided B should be one. And why did you start with B? Was there significance about the letter B that you wanted to start? Um, because, well, since it was the, um, since it was like- The, the greatest place value? It was the greatest place value. So it was kind of like mostly the thing that would like decide how large the number was. Yeah, that's exactly why. This is exactly why you always start with the greatest place value, especially in a problem that's asking for the least sum possible, right? Because as you said, the greatest place value right here is what's going to determine the, it's going to have the biggest impact on the final sum. 
So I also liked how you thought that, like, you know, E should be zero because it appeared multiple times. Um, T should be two because it also appeared multiple times. So all your thinking, your thinking process is great. Right? So the 10,000th place has the least possible value of one for all the reasons that you said, because it is the greatest place value, we start there. So B is equal to one. E also appears many times, so we assign that E its least possible value as well. But I have a question to you. Why did you start with, why did you do E before T? Because right here, T appears eight times, and E appears five times. So why do you think you had to do E, e first before T? I don't know. <laughs> Okay, it's it's totally fine if you don't know. That's valid. That's a valid response. So here we start with E because E is also has a pretty big impact on the final on the final sum. E is in the let's see, the E is in the ten thousands place. So it's the place that's next smaller than B. So because of this, we start with E next. We're trying to move from the greatest place value to the least place value. This is our method of organization for this problem. So E ends up being zero. After this, you moved on to T because it appeared many times. And I, I totally get what you mean. But here what is important is we have to stick to our organizational problem, our organization method. So just be to the same way why you thought E had to go in front of T because it was in the greater place value. We also have to do I, A, and U next because they're in the same, you know, next largest place value. So we assign these the next smaller digits, which are three, which are two, three, and four. So this is where this is probably like, you know, getting different from what you got as your answer. But by assigning the letters I, A, U, two, three, and four, we move on to give t five because it is in the next greatest place value, so it gets the next smallest digit. Finally, r gets six. So our final answer, so we have, you know, four different numbers now. Added together, we have 512,024. So many of, I love the way that you're approaching these problems because it shows that you're really thinking and you're looking for the patterns and things. That's what we're looking for. Okay, do you have any feedback about this problem when you were doing it? You're uh, muted right now. Uh, okay. Uh, so was there anything you didn't understand or you still have questions about on this problem? Really, but I get, I get how it might be. Yeah, it's totally interesting because it like makes sense to the human brain, right? That it makes really, it really makes sense that from B you go to E and then you go to T because it just appears so many times. But you do have to remember that the place value is super important. And as Kaylee is, you know, writing in the chat right now. It's super, it's also super important to be organized. So our process of organization was to go from the greatest place value to the least. Wow. Place. I made careless mistakes. I know. That's okay. Everybody's learning here. So um, now what we're going to do is because this Google meeting ends in, this, end, this call ends in 20 minutes. Um, because, you know, we can only have like one free meeting for one hour. We are, this is going to be different in the actual summer boot camp. But then we're going to have a completely, we're going to solve this problem. But now I am going to, in the chat, post another link. And you're going to, we're going to all join this link next. Because, um, and Kaylee is going to be teaching you all about crypto apps. So we're going to meet you in this other link. <laughs> Wait, let's just join it right now. Yeah, we, we're joining it right now. Yeah. And Kaylee, you're sharing your screen. Bye.